In this video, we're going to have a look at the intersection of straight lines in three dimensions. So when we're plotting lines in three dimensions, there's basically four things that can happen. So case one is that the lines are parallel. And do not meet. So what we see here is an example of two parallel lines. Now we use an autograph to help us visualize this. So let's have a look at this red line here. We can see that this red line has the equation r equals 2, 1, 3 plus lambda 2 minus 3, 5. This purple line here, we've got r equals 1 minus 3, 2 plus lambda 4 minus 6, 10. Now let's just look at the two directions here of the purple line and the red line. Now we can see that the purple line, the direction is just double the red line. So these two lines are parallel because the lines are going in the same direction. The directions are multiples of each other. So we can see this as well, that the lines don't actually get any closer together. So let's start spinning this round. And we can see that in three dimensions, these lines never get any closer together. Therefore, that's one case. Two lines are parallel and do not meet. So the next case are that the lines are parallel and share a point. Therefore, are the same line. Now this one doesn't really need much help visualising because if two lines are parallel and they share a point, i.e. go in the same direction, then they have to be the same line. Simple as that. The next case, case three, is that the lines are not parallel and intersect. So let's have a look at that example. So to help us visualize this case, we're going to use Autograph again. Brilliant free program, you should download it. So I'll set that spinning. You see there's a point of intersection that's here. And no matter which direction we look at the line in, we can see that point of intersection still stands. So let's go that way. Yeah, those lines always intersect, no matter which direction you look at it from. And the fourth case is that the lines are called skew. And what skew means is that they're not parallel and do not intersect. Now many students forget the not parallel part. So two lines cannot intersect, but that doesn't mean that the skew because two lines might not intersect because they are parallel. So skew means are not parallel and do not intersect. And to help us visualize that, we're going to use autograph again. So these lines are skew, but currently from the direction we're looking in, those lines look like they intersect. They don't, but they look like they do because we're only looking at it in two dimensions. To actually see that they don't intersect, we're going to have to start spinning this round. And we can see there, if we're looking at it from that angle, they don't intersect. We look from that angle, they look like they intersect. That angle, they look like they intersect. There we go again. There, they don't look like they intersect again. So now we've had a chance to visualize all these cases. Let's have a look at an exam question where we try to identify which one of these four cases two straight lines actually fit into. So we'll look at this example here. So the question asks us to determine whether the lines whose equations are those there are parallel, intersect, or skew. Well, the first thing we should do before we even attempt any method is write this in vector format. We don't want to see any i's, j's, and k's. They just make it look more complicated. So we've got r equals, and the first equation is 1 plus 2 lambda minus lambda and 3 plus 5 lambda. 
And the next equation is r equals, so mu minus 1, 5 minus mu, and 2 minus 5 mu. Now this is a particularly confusing question because those straight lines aren't in the format that we'd expect to see them. We like to see lines in the form r equals a point plus a parameter times a direction. But we can easily separate out the parameters, the lambdas here, from the point vector. So this line here is actually just r equals, and the point, the bits without the lambda, is 1. Then there's no number in the second term. And in the third component, the number is 3 plus lambda times 2 minus 1, 5. And just have a look at that and convince yourself that this line here is equivalent to that one. So we've got 1 plus 2 lambda. We've got 0, take lambda. Yeah, that's that one there. And we've got 3 plus 5 lambda. Yeah, that's 3 plus 5 lambda there. So let's do the same for the next one. R equals, and the number part, the point, minus 1, 5, 2 plus mu, and there's one mu in the first, there's minus one mu in the second, and there's minus five mu in the third. So again, we've got minus one plus one mu, yeah, minus one plus mu, five minus one mu, yeah, five minus one mu, and then we've got two minus five mu, yeah, two, take five mu. So that's the format that we want the lines in. So now we can actually work with this and do the question. So when doing a question like this, the first thing we should do is check whether lines are parallel. And that's a very easy check to perform. And if they are parallel, then we certainly know that they're not skew. So to check whether they're parallel, just check whether the directions are multiples of each other. So whether these direction vectors here are multiples of each other. So we can see possibly that this one here is double this one here. So let's see if the same rule applies here. So minus 1 times 2 doesn't give us minus 1. Therefore, they're not parallel. So what we'd write here is 2 minus 1, 5 is not equal to some multiple of 1 minus 1 minus 5 therefore lines are not parallel so step 2 form 3 simultaneous equations for the x, y, and z coordinates of the potential point of intersection so the equation that we're going to form for the x coordinate well if these two lines do intersect then the x-coordinate, i.e. the top line here, is going to have to equal the top line here as well, because the x-coordinates are going to have to match. So the x-coordinate equation is 1 plus 2 lambda is equal to minus 1 plus 1 lot of mu. The y-equation is going to be the middle line, so 0 minus lambda equals 5 take mu and the z equation is going to be 3 plus 5 lambda is equal to 2 minus 5 mu so step 3 now that we've got the equations solve the easiest pair of equations 
to find out a value for lambda and mu. So I'm judging that the easiest equation is this one here. We can easily make that say lambda equals or mu equals. And the second easiest equation, this one here, because it's got mu in it on its own as well. The coefficients just look a little bit easier. So they're the two equations I'm going to solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is make this one say mu equals. So I'm going to make the y equation say mu equals. So y implies that. So mu equals 5 plus lambda. So I've rearranged that to get what mu is. I'm going to sub that into the x equation. So now x implies that 1 plus 2 lambda equals minus 1 plus my value for mu, which is 5 plus lambda that I got from the y equation. So 1 plus 5 plus lambda. So that implies that if I get all the lambdas on one side, if I take them all to the left-hand side, so 2 lambda take lambda is just lambda. If I take the 1 over to the other side, I get minus 2 plus 5, which is 3. So I get lambda equals 3. And let's make that prominent as part of our answer. So the examiner will be looking for that. So lambda equals 3, put a box around it. Then we now actually have a formula that we rearranged earlier for mu. So now we can say that mu equals 5 plus lambda, which is 8 again. Let's make that a prominent part of our answer. And just to show you an alternative way of doing this, what I could have done for these two equations, so I'm going back up to the x and y equations that I've highlighted here. What I could have done is rearranged them into a form where I could just put them in the calculator. So get all the um, the letters on the left-hand side and all the numbers on the right-hand side. So this could be rearranged to 2 lambda minus mu equals minus 2. And this one could be arranged, rearranged to minus lambda plus mu equals 5. So let's put that in the calculator. So we've got menu, simultaneous equation solver. There's two unknowns, and so we've got, drag that across there, 2 lambda minus 1 mu is minus 2, and I've got minus 1 lambda plus 1 mu is 5, and it tells me that lambda equals 3, yet yeah, there it is there, and mu equals 8, there it is there. So I've got values for lambda and mu, so it's looking... At the moment, like these two lines will intersect because I found values of lambda and mu for which they would intersect. But that point of intersection that we think we found could be an illusion. So it looks like they intersect there based on our values of lambda and mu. But we're only looking at it again in two dimensions. We need to spin this graph round and look at the third dimension, i.e. the third equation that we haven't looked at yet and check that these values of lambda and mu work for that equation. So let's check the third equation now. So let's have a look at z. So when lambda equals 3 and mu equals 8, the left-hand side of the equation is 3 plus 5 lots of lambda equals 18. The right-hand side of the equation is 2 take 5 lots of 8, 2 take 40, which is minus 38, which is not equal to the left-hand side. Therefore, the lines don't intersect because the third dimension, the, the values of lambda and mu that we've just found, don't hold in the third dimension. Therefore, lines do not intersect Therefore, they are skew. And to illustrate that, let's go to autograph again. So these are the two lines plotted here. So we twist it round, spin it round like that. We can see now that that point of intersection was an illusion. The lines are indeed skew. They're certainly not parallel looking at them. 
and they don't intersect. So that's the method for deciding whether two lines are parallel, skew, or whether they intersect. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.